The fourth assessment report of the IPCC has clearly brought out that warming of the climate system is unequivocal. I think there is no reason for anyone to doubt that climate change is for real. We know that temperatures during the 20th century have gone up by an average of 0.74 degrees. 0.74 degrees in such a short period of time, in relative terms, is a very high increase in temperature. We have enough evidence and data to show that extreme precipitation events are on the increase. And this takes me to another major impact of climate change, and that is the increase in frequency and intensity of floods as well as droughts. We also have an increase in heat waves. Now here I'd like to emphasize <clears throat> that what has really caused the problem is not the flow of emissions that's taking place in any particular period of time, but it's the cumulative emissions that have taken place since, let's say, industrialization began. And therefore, the bulk of the responsibility for causing the problem lies on the developed countries, the industrialized nations, because for over 200 years, they have been em emitting increasing quantities of greenhouse gases, which have added to the concentration in the atmosphere of all these gases. And therefore, in the Framework Convention on Climate Change, it has been clearly specified that we need to bring, bring about a reduction in these emissions, essentially on the basis of common but differentiated responsibility. It's the developed countries that are supposed to bring about a reduction to start with. And of course, the developing countries are expected not to follow exactly the same path of development that the industrialized countries have pursued. And to be able to bring about a reduction in emissions of greenhouse gases, over a period of time once they have reached a level of prosperity. But at the global level, there is enormous urgency to see that we bring about a reduction in the emissions of greenhouse gases. And the more rapidly we do that, the greater the possibility of our being able to avoid the worst impacts of climate change in the future. We have estimated in the IPCC that any temperature increase above 1.5 to 2.5 degrees Celsius could result in a threat to 20 to 30 percent of the species being faced with extinction. And if we allow temperatures to increase to 3.5 degrees, then there would be 40 to 70 percent of the species that would be endangered and would face the threat of extinction. If the entire Greenland ice sheet was to collapse and fall into the ocean or become part of the oceans, then clearly we would have sea level rise of about seven meters. And this really means that those who survive, and one hopes that there would be hundreds of millions who do survive, they would just become climate change refugees. And therefore, this is a humanitarian problem of the most serious kind. If we don't set ourselves some ambitious, some absolutely critical goals by which we can save all species living on this planet, then obviously we would be responsible for causing harm, causing damage that very rightly future generations will every, have every reason to blame us for. If we want to stabilize temperature increase to around 2 degrees Celsius, then we would have to ensure that emissions globally peak by 2015 and start declining immediately thereafter. And the faster they decline, the greater would be the probability of our being able to avoid the worst impacts of climate change in the future. But the cost of doing this is not at all large. In fact, we have estimated that by 2030, to follow this kind of approach and this trajectory of reduction of greenhouse gas emissions would cost no more than 3% of the global GDP in 2030. So I think the choices are very clear. We need changes in policy, we need changes in value, and we also need changes in our own personal lifestyles. But it is critical that governments that must be at the vanguard of this change that has to be brought about move with a sense of urgency. We don't have a moment to lose, and if we want to solve the enormous range of problems that we are going to be confronted with as a result of climate change, then we better start moving fast and moving with a sense of urgency. Thank you.